Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries, some of the more interesting discoveries, in regards to gravitational waves that we usually associate with various black hole collisions. But in this particular case, the study did not study black holes. And in this particular case, the actual waves that were discovered on the planet are much, much longer in wavelengths, most likely created by much more massive objects or objects that are extremely ancient. And this is something that has been actually investigated for the past few years using the system of different pulsars. And so let's talk a little bit more about this particular study, what it means to our understanding of the universe, and obviously how all of this works as well. But let's start with the idea of gravitational waves, and I guess let's start with black holes. So it's actually kind of incredible to think about the fact that we only found gravitational waves or confirmed gravitational waves back in 2015. So back in 2015, the scientists finally confirmed the existence of gravitational waves created by binary black holes. Or to be more exact, created by black holes that are about to collide and form gravitational waves of different frequencies during their collision. Later on, the detections have also discovered collisions between black holes and neutron stars, two neutron stars, and potentially some other unusual objects that are still being investigated, but most likely represent even more massive black holes. And when it comes to these gravitational waves, well, it's actually kind of difficult to wrap your head around what exactly they represent. These are obviously not the same as your typical waves detected on planet Earth, and these are obviously not the waves we can usually perceive in any way. But these waves do create oscillations of space-time itself, basically making everything around us sort of vibrate without anyone realizing. And the only way of naturally detecting this, at least at the moment, is by using these very large interferometers, usually employing extremely sensitive lasers. And so by watching the actual changes in the space-time between these lasers, the scientists can generally determine if there was some sort of a gravitational wave effect. But in this case, it only focuses on very specific frequencies, with frequencies ranging from hundreds to thousands of hertz, usually representing much smaller objects, so for example, a typical solar mass black hole. And so if we wanted to detect some other wavelengths from some other larger objects, for example, supermassive black holes, we would not be able to see them with the LIGO, the detector that was used for these detections. In this case, the frequencies would be much lower, sometimes less than one hertz. And so one of the possible solutions here in the past was a proposal of a space interferometer known as laser interferometer space antenna that would essentially orbit around the solar system and would try to detect the gravitational waves this way. Now naturally this is just a proposition and this doesn't exist yet, but this would in theory allow us to detect a lot of other things we've never been able to see before. But LISA would be a really big project and it's still sort of in its planning stage so it might actually take a few years or possibly even a decade before this is possible. But we do have other ways of detecting gravitational waves using some other really, really interesting and very creative techniques. One of them is from the collaboration known as Nanograph we discussed a few years ago that employs a much more sensitive and actually a much more creative way of looking at the universe. It essentially uses pulsars or the extremely dense neutron stars that tend to produce extremely accurate pulsations, usually in radio light. And the thing about pulsars is that their oscillations are so extremely accurate that someone has even proposed to use them as sort of a more improved version of an atomic clock. So basically here, by measuring the oscillations with extreme precision, it becomes possible to then measure time. But what if you were to look at several pulsars in different locations of the galaxy? And what if you were to then compare various oscillation differences in those pulsars? And that's precisely what a lot of these collaborations have been doing for over a decade now. Nanograph is probably the biggest one. Last year it released the data from 45 different pulsars. But we also have the European Pulsar Timing Array and the International Pulsar Timing Array that have recently combined the data from 65 various pulsars once again confirming that something is definitely going on out there. In other words, by looking at approximately a decade of data from 65 various pulses around the galaxy, they found strong evidence indicating some sort of an ultra-low frequency signal that in some sense can be described as some kind of a gravitational wave background. It can also be sort of compared to the famous cosmic microwave background, which we know represents some of the most ancient light in the universe. Now this, on the other hand, is not visual light, it's not the light we can see with our eyes or the light we can sense with 
a microwave detector like in this case. This type of a detection, this type of a signal, is only visible as a gravitational wave. With the scientists sort of comparing this to the sound of a drum humming in the background, with basically the entire universe vibrating at these extremely low frequencies, or these extremely long wave gravitational ripples that seem to be all over the place. And all of this was detected by looking at various oscillations from these pulsars for over 12 years and noticing slight discrepancies in some of the signals detected from the pulsars that can be best described as essentially these waves creating ripples between us and the pulsars. And considering that in the last year this is actually one of many studies confirming these results, with a lot of other studies already focusing on potential explanations, whatever is causing these unusual gravitational waves is definitely really exciting and extremely interesting. But I guess the question is, so what could it be? What's causing these unusual, very long wave gravitational waves and what can be the best possible explanation? Well, naturally one of the bigger explanations here would be potentially very ancient supermassive black holes colliding or slowly approaching one another, creating these extremely powerful gravitational waves. This would of course be the most likely explanation and the one that could help us explain how basically galaxies grow larger and larger by combining their black holes and combining a lot of the mass. However, interestingly, the data from some of the studies suggested that this was maybe not the best explanation to fit with what we're seeing here. Interestingly enough, another explanation was proposed in regards to the early formation in the universe that the scientists often refer to as the cosmic string that can maybe explain some of these formations as well. Cosmic strings can actually be seen as basically these unusual deformations formed in the early universe kind of similar to various deformations that we usually find inside crystallized water, inside ice. And so just like the cracks inside ice, some of the theories propose that something similar formed in the early universe, and essentially this would be the possible explanation for these cosmic strings, and of course for some of the gravitational waves that could be created. The better explanation can be found in one of the older videos specifically on this topic, the video that you can also find in the description below. But it could also be some other unexplained process that was happening in the early universe that basically resulted in these very powerful gravitational waves that survived for billions of years. Honestly, at the moment, nobody really knows and it's extremely difficult to say. Also, we would probably need a few more years or actually more like a decade of new data in order to actually confirm this first. At the moment, it's even been suggested that maybe all of this is actually due to some processes inside pulsars that we just don't really understand yet. Maybe these oscillations were created by the pulsars themselves. Or basically that it's not really gravitational waves we're detecting, we're actually just detecting different oscillations in the pulsars. Nevertheless, unlike the gravitational waves from black hole collisions, which can be described as transients, or basically events that just happen once, these particular gravitational waves we're detecting from pulsars, in essence, seem to be more or less permanent. They literally seem to be like a hum or a background noise that's always there. So once again, very similar to the cosmic microwave background. Which also means that maybe one day, once the techniques improve and once we have more observatories, the scientists might be able to create an actual map of these gravitational waves just like we have with the CMB in order to help us understand what exactly happened in the early universe and what created this gravitational wave background noise that we seem to be detecting from various studies. And actually one of the other propositions was in regards to the creation of primordial black holes the black holes that could in theory represent the mysterious dark matter. And so by detecting these gravitational waves or, or this wave uh, background, we could maybe finally find the dark matter that we're looking for. And so in essence, those are the three main propositions right now. Either the mysterious cosmic strings, possibly dark matter or basically primordial black holes, or maybe collisions from supermassive black holes that created various galaxies. Or maybe all of them all together. For now, nobody really knows. Whatever it is, it's definitely something that's been happening for a long time, and it's definitely something extremely powerful. But until we have observatories like LISA right here, it's going to be very difficult to tell exactly what's happening, or more specifically, identify where it's actually coming from. But until new data comes out, or until new studies, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.